here is our study plan. First, we learn each minuet in slow tempo with simplified bowings and fingerings. Then I will record each of those minuets for you playing through. Then we will work in faster tempo with more difficult fingerings and bowings. And again, I will record it for you this way. And finally, you will hear my version of those minuets as if I am performing them on stage. Minuet number one, tempo quarter note 60 with simplified bowings and fingerings. At the beginning, we start with two open strings. It would help a lot if you take advantage of breathing. You breathe in and then you exhale and at the same time you prepare your bow. So you, you are using the extra energy from your upper body to gracefully land on the string. This way, those open strings will sound deeper and sound quality will not be forced. As always, when you have several notes on different strings, you have to take into consideration gently turning your wrist. This way you will get the perfect angle to play on each string and that will allow every note to respond as quickly as possible. In the second measure, you have several groups of two notes slurred together. I would suggest to play every second note a bit lighter. That adds extra grace and I believe stylistically it's better to play baroque music this way rather than making each note equally long. And this will ensure that it sounds like baroque dance. Try to play this second measure several times just paying attention to the relation between first and second note of each bow. Ultimately, you will choose how much of that you will be showing. And your tempo will affect that too. Playing faster will make you to do this more subtle. And when you play in a slower tempo, you might want to consider slightly exaggerating the difference between the first and the second note of each slur. In this measure, we have a trail. Remember, your trail doesn't have to be very fast, but it has to be as clear as possible. Make sure that each note which this trill consists of, you can hear, and you can hear very clearly. The very common way to play this trill is starting from the high note, from C, and after the trill, you have two grace notes. You will need to place those notes before the third beat. That means you have two beats, first and second, to play the trill and grace notes. And one more thing, when you play this trill and grace notes, you could play them together with D, the middle voice, or you can stop playing this middle note D at some point after the end of the first beat. The first option when you sustain this D will sound like this. And the second option, when I stop playing this D after the first beat, will sound this way. Mm -hmm. 
you don't have to make this decision right now once and forever but perhaps it would be a little bit less confusing to sustain this D and learn it this way and once you start playing a faster tempo and your confidence will be up you might try it in a different way dropping that D <laughs> In the seventh measure, you have to make quick string crossing between D and A string. And this fingering I am only suggesting as a simplified option. It is easier for the left hand, but somewhat trickier for the right hand. It's hard for me to say what would work best for you. In more advanced version, we will try to stay on the same string. And at the end of the phrase, in measure 8, we have three quarter notes. Try to gracefully end this phrase. That means you have to show the downbeat as a bit louder and somewhat longer note. I know you think they are all quarter notes, but you have some control about the length of this note regardless what's written in music. You can play the first quarter note more or less full length and then second and especially third quarter note you can play as if they have a dot this way those quarter notes will effectively sound as if there are eighth note followed by eighth note rest you will have to make a special effort to play the last note much quieter despite that note being on the C string, which without extra effort might sound much louder. In measure 12, we'll have to make a quick string crossing from the A string all the way to G string and then back to the A string. Again and again, your wrist control will be extremely important. Let's make sure that we practice those string crossings and we will play just three notes involved in those string crossings using the bowings we are going to play with when we play actual music. A on G string will sound somewhat louder, but here it's perfectly fine since this is the downbeat of the next measure. The bowings in measure 12 might be a bit confusing. You see that I wrote two down bows there. It doesn't mean that you have to lift the bow and restart at the frog. It just means that those first four eighth notes at the beginning of the measure are not connected. You can actually take a little bit of time as if you have to breathe when you move your bow from G to A string. And if I would write four notes slur, it might not be as clear as the option you see here in your music. Let me play it for you a couple of times to make it more clear. You could see that I played the first note, A, and then I moved to the A string and I just restarted from the spot I stopped after playing the first note. Mm -hmm. 
when you use the bowings I suggested here and play three notes per bow followed by three separate notes. Make sure that you are not using too much of the bow for those slurred three notes. Otherwise, you will end up too far, too close to the tip and then it will be harder for you to move back to the frog. <laughs> I played the measure 13 for you several times and you could see that I was trying to use less bow for the first three slurred notes and also when I had three following notes with separate bow strokes. I tried to use a bit more bow for each of up bow notes. This way the eighth note number four and number six of the measure will require a little bit faster bow speed and the eighth note number five which comes down bow will get a little bit less bow. Uh, when you play three notes down then you use a little bit more bow for the note number four, a little bit less for the note number five and more bow for the note number six. And here you are you are close to the frog and you're ready to play the next measure. In a measure 16, the first dotted quarter note is the end of the previous phrase. That means that even though you don't see any rest after that, it would be more musical decision if you stop there, if you take a little bit of the moment to breathe, you can call it 16th or even 8th note rest, and then you restart after that the beginning of the next phrase. At the end of measure 18, you will have to prepare the extension to play the C sharp in the next measure. And it might be a good idea to take advantage of the note which comes before, open C string. And while you're playing C string, your left hand is free to prepare this extension. <laughs> At the end of the measure 22, you might need to spend a little bit of time working on a shift to the second position, so you play E with the fourth finger, but after you do that, you can stay in this position for a few more notes. <laughs> And this way your left hand will be a bit less busy moving back and forth between positions. And another benefit of using these fingerings is that you will get more familiar to the second position even playing on D and G strings. And the last note is a simple octave. Did I say simple? My bad. It is actually very difficult. because. If your pinky is just a tiny bit off, it will sound, well, quite horrible. This way you have to make sure that the note before the octave, before two Gs, which is F sharp, is perfectly in tune and you always have to make the same kind of motion switching from the third to the fourth finger. Again, playing it number of times will help. When 
those two Gs are perfectly in tune, it might even sound that you play just one note. They have so much in common, so when they are just perfect, they blend extremely well. And when they are even a little bit off, you will hear those two pitches clashing against each other. Again, make sure that you work on this spot, because it might spoil a lot of good impression you will make playing this minuet. Mm. 